All right, you awesome geeks. I hope you came hungry, because we're diving into the pit for a little smoky Minoc. Okay, so here's what I want to walk you through. Images. These are all just various images of a combination of things. So I used Mid Journey AI and I took images of various Star Wars locations, whether it was artwork or screenshots. And then I mixed it with concept art and actual photos of Galaxy's Edge. And I thought maybe what we could do is take your architectural design experience, combine it with my nerd experience, mm -hmm. and then we want to take this whole surface and block out areas, figure out exactly where we want the pit hole to be. I took a nail with some twine on it so we can tie that around a pencil and get our diameter. Sandra, this in. Getting super precise here. When we get ready to cut it, we'll get really precise. Now we know what we've got as far as space. <laughs> and then we can cut some shapes and stuff out of foam core to give us a sense of scale and how tightly packed we can make things. I also have, as you know, a ton of toys and we want to use those yeah. ships and stuff plan for where they would be. What's that? It's us to scale. <laughs> we have all these other guys, oh. but not us. There we are. Well, now we can move on. Now we can move on. What's next? <laughs> okay, so I want to start with our shop. This is where we hang out. We hang out. I kind of want to figure out our layout, our map. Let's build a map. A plan. A plan. Like a master plan. Master plan. Okay. okay, so let's start with this. So maybe there's a front area where you could park a speeder. Basically, here's our... The outside of the building, yep. What if there's a table right here and you can see us standing here? So yeah, if the door was in this realm there, add some kind of shape, and then that could be the extent of the size of this building. Foam core. Foam core, foam board, however you want to say it. Although this particular building itself isn't exactly what we're gonna end up with, it does give us a rough idea. You know, it's been a really long time since we made some cool sci-fi stuff out of trash. So today I thought we would make something out of my old coffee maker. It has a cool pattern on it. The bottom's got some cool parts. That's not bad. All the parts and pieces from a coffee maker. All kinds of different things that we can use. When people ask, where do you get all those greeblies? Take stuff apart, my friends. This one here. When I saw it, I thought, this is something I want to use in our pit project as maybe the facade for one of the buildings. And today I'm just in the mood to get this project started and I wanna do a fair amount of kit bashing. So we are going to build a restaurant, specifically a barbecue pit for the pit, if you will. And we're gonna start with this piece and we are just gonna do a little uh, creative building. I'm referencing an image that we can translate that structure combined with rock to give this the look we want. I think we're in a really good spot. So we're gonna leave it here and then we're gonna dive in. So what I did was I 
cut out some columns and then I cut out a uh, piece of foam that's got a taper. The idea is I can add a little detail to the bottom that will give me this tapered effect. I'm making very deliberate aesthetic choices that will be carried to the rest of the city we build. All right, there we go. So now I got clean opening all the way around. Okay. Now, super glue is just a temporary hold. I'm gonna anchor this piece in, but I wanted to get it in place. talked about what I'm doing. What I'm trying to do is simulate rock that's been carved away. And now we can start to sculpt these columns and round them over now that we've got the rock part figured out. Okay, I created a rock outcropping. A lot of what we've been creating here so far has been flat surfaces, so I'm gonna add another texture of rock to create the rest of this environment. Let's go ahead and cut this down. Then we can build up the back area and create a terrace. When you use the hot wire cutter, you get this iconic pattern. So we're gonna cut and sculpt this to get more of a rock ledge. working on putting some more layers and stuff in here. It's more of an organic process than I'm used to. I mean, I guess that's part of the fun. It's actually been really enjoyable. One additional thing we're gonna add is these plaster rocks. And we can just hot glue these into place. We're gonna have some work to do with sculpt the mold to get this to feel cohesive. Since I'm gonna have to use sculpt the mold on many parts of this, I think what I'm gonna do real quick is address this base here and just cut in some simple stairs to help set the tone for this down here. We're gonna whip up, sculpt the mold, some modeling compound in there. Stuff is super cool. To quote the Big Lebowski, it really ties the room together. But it is pretty amazing how well it works to put this stuff together. Tile grout is gonna give us some texture. I didn't wanna go as far as plaster with this because I wanna keep a lot of the texture I built into the foam when I was sculpting it. The tile grout is gonna give us that fine grain kind of texture. All right, uh, I gave it a coat of Mod Podge and then a flat black spray paint. Now we're gonna give it a Zenithal highlight. We're gonna get some paint down and we're gonna work on the rock and then work on the structure here. We're gonna experiment with a variety of different paints from acrylic ink to some Vallejo air colors. Okay, so that's the base layer for the building. Now when it comes to the rock, I'm gonna do two different techniques. One is I'm gonna use different inks through the airbrush. Probably gonna focus more on the blue at the start so I can get a blue-gray look to the rock. And then I'm gonna come in with a variety of different tones of oil washes. Our rock 
blocks are looking pretty good, but now we need to work on some dry brushing. This Archive X paints are pretty spectacular, and I'm gonna use their gray as well as Alliance White. All right, that's a decent start on the painting. Then we've got work within the rocks to get uh, some vegetation and things in there. Obviously, we have all the detail we need to do here still. I've got a 3D printed Star Wars inspired barbecue and counter. We are going to use a pod racer engine, similar to what you see at Galaxy's Edge for their Ronto Roasters area and have the pod racer engine suspended above the pit area and that provides the cooking heat. I've used a styrene here to create some dimensions to hold this all together. If you've never used Milliput before, it's basically a two-part epoxy. When we mix this up together, it'll cure hard. But look at this really thoroughly mixed up here. I'm going to fill these screw holes here. I got a little water just to make sure it's nice and smooth. I'll leave it a little proud and then I can sand it back once it's cured. I'm gonna take a couple of parts that I got out of a coffee maker to create some interesting looking details. Now we just gotta get it dirty. For the record, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. I'm gonna play with a bunch of ink colors on this. We're gonna use a guitar string as our cable, and now we'll use that to tie off. What I did was I mounted the supports into here, and I've got a cable tying the top. We need to create various details, and in order to do that, I'm going to be kit bashing, which means I'm taking pieces from a lot of different model kits, taking those apart, and then reimagining them in a different way. This is from a World War II model. I love the opening here, and I think that could serve as maybe a sign above the door also have this little guy. We 3D modeled it. It's been 3D printed. It's for a barbecue sign. So here's BBQ on frosted acrylic. We will be able to illuminate with this little track here. That was a little more challenging than I wanted, but everything's glued in place here now. And I just need to solder here and shrink tubing on this end. I put a little aluminum in the back. We can slide the sign in and we should be good to go. Apologies, I did not record putting the LED filaments in here, but I laid them in here. I glued in the backlight with our Smoky Minoc label on there and can do a little light up for you here. There you go. I wanna take this opportunity to thank our amazing Patreon community, the Smugglers Guild. No matter how many times I say it, it will always be true. You are what keeps this crazy geek train rolling down the tracks and we could not do this without you. This week, we have a special behind the scenes look from this project where we're gonna build the Smoky Minox sign, and we're also going to include all of the files we used in this project, including those from the Rebel Base builds as our way of saying thank you. Each of you are amazing. Thank you so much. Last part is to detail this out. So I'm gonna go through the uh, model kit pieces. I wanna do some detail work on here. This here, I love all these little vents. When I can cut this off and add it to it, then yeah, it's gonna be great. We'll be able to set that off right about in there. Here is the other little detail that we're gonna cover up the hole with. I know there are some angry hot glue people out there. I think that it has a certain place. And I found that the hot glue works really well with this rubber material. We've got the window in place, and then this little detail on the side. We've got our handle up here, and then obviously our sign all set in place. 
take a second and point out that my nephew built me a little antenna that sits on top of our coffee maker piece. I'm just super pumped that he came and worked in the shop and helped me build pieces for this project. If you're building a restaurant called the Smoky Minoc, chances are you might need some Minoc. So I reached out to my good friend James from the Rebel Base Builds and asked for a favor. James went through and crafted from scratch 3D models of not only Minoc, but other various little critters that we could use as food for our scale build. James is an incredible 3D model artist, and you can get access to these files and many more by joining the Rebel Base Builds Patreon. We're gonna put links in the description below for you to access that, as well as his YouTube channel, you can see his incredible projects. James, thank you so much for contributing to this project and helping a friend out. I have been spending some time trying to figure out a very cool way to rotate our crispy critter. My friend Deanna sent me a cool design that she did. This center piece rotates. I asked her where I could get more of these motors because I stole it from the projects he sent me so I can use it to rotate our friend. I'm going to use this plumbing fixture. It's got a great sci-fi look. The motor fits in here really nice. And then my nephew Brody made me a little barrel and I'm gonna be able to fit that nicely in there. I feel like we're on the home stretch here, like we're just about finished. <laughs> but I've got some painting to do, like our friend here, the rotisserie. I'm gonna have to ask James what exact creature this is, or if he just created it, but I need to paint it up. I started by giving it a zenithal highlight. Everything gets painted black, and then you spray it with a lighter color in the direction in which the light is coming from. It allows you to see where the shadows are. It works as a guide. Now, I am not a professional miniature painter by any stretch of the imagination. However, it does give me some guidelines to work off of. Our little crispy critter has a single layer. It looks pretty awful, but we're gonna make it look better. I'm going to add a layer of speed paint. So if you're familiar with contrast paints, Citadel makes contrast paints. The speed paint from Army Painter is very similar. So when the Army Painter gets applied, it will create shadows. So you might already be able to tell it's still wet, but you get both dark and lighter areas as the paint gets applied. Now, that doesn't look right. The white bone color contrast is too bright. As we come back, we get some more of that speed paint and we go over that bone color. And there you go. Now that it's dried, yeah, it looks, it looks pretty good. I've got a lot of learning to do. It wouldn't be the Smoky Minoc without a Smoky Minoc. Our little rotisserie is complete. I just put a hole in the base here and I'm gonna run some cables through. This has a little LED and some smoke that I painted on a uh, cotton ball. I'm just gonna use a little three cell real quick and he should rotate around the fire. And there you have it, rotisserie over the flameage. I wasn't gonna do this. I wasn't gonna add any lighting inside the grill. However, I kinda like the idea of putting lighting in there. Just a little bit of some airbrushing on that and now we've got smoke. Fairly nice looking fire effect. There it is. Yeah, I think that'll work. If you look here, it's giving it a nice glow on the bottom. And it makes me feel better that there's some fire down there. The next detail is a way to display our lovely Minox. All right, and there we go with a little finesse. Doing time on the drying racks. Do some dry brushing a little bit here to bring out some of the ridge detail. I like it. I like the little dirty path right there, right where the foot traffic is.
Um, I'm gonna show you the door. I'm gonna apologize that I didn't show you installing it, but there was a tremendous amount of cursing and we have kids that watch this channel, so I decided maybe I would just cuss with the camera off. We need a door. I've laser cut out a simple door with a lot of panels and things so we can give it some dimension. And now all we need to do is peel everything off and then we'll give it a paint job. the Smoky Minoc. If you're having a craving for smoked foods, then there's no better place in the galaxy than right here. The executive chef, Sai Mushandar, is always cooking up something new and exciting. Maybe you're in the mood for some smoked womp rat stew with green chilies. Do you have a craving for slow roasted dewback ribs over a bed of crusted spine fluff? Or maybe the obvious, yet most famous, Minoc wings in Ewok sauce. No matter the choice, you can't go wrong at the Smoky Minoc. Come see us at our new location in the pit. You won't find a better barbecue in the recesses of the Outer Rim. We guarantee it. Well, my friends, this is the first step of many in this new build series that we're going to have on the channel. There's so much more for me to learn when it comes to working in scale, and I can't wait to get my hands on all those different techniques and bring you with us. And on this project here, there are several things still unfinished, like the patio, lighting of the sign, and the interior details, which we will absolutely be doing. So I hope you hit the subscribe button, like this if you haven't already, it really helps us out. And we'll see you the next time we build something out of nothing. <laughs>